Hi everyone, my name is Tammy and I'm joined again here by Little Stubby. Um, and we're here to actually talk about African Penguin Awareness Day. It was last Saturday and uh, we had a really wonderful time here in Cape Town, South Africa. And I just wanted to share stuff that happened during the day with you. So for those of you who have been following this lesson campaign, can just um, get some closure on that. Uh, Stubby is there. Yeah, Stubby's happy. She had a, she wasn't actually there on the day. I was going to take her, but it was very, very hot, so I decided to leave her behind because I didn't want her sitting in this hot, hot tent all day, you know, having all these people bug her. So she wasn't there, but I promise I'll bring you next year, Stubby. You know, if she's still cross with me because I haven't, I didn't take her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, girl. So. On the day, what wound up happening is that, and what happens each year, we've been doing this for 12 years now, is we have a penguin release. This year, we released 14 African penguins, and we actually had quite an interesting story in this bunch. The one penguin was AP284. Now, how our coding numbers work is that when a bird is admitted into the hospital, it gets AP for African penguin, and then the number that follows it tells us which penguin it is that we've seen that year. So AP284 would have been the 284th African penguin we'd seen in 2015. Now, AP284 is a very special bird and a really interesting case that Sam Cobb encountered. This was an adult African penguin that came in from trauma, it wound up having a fishing line wrapped around its leg, which actually wound up cutting into the skin, and it was very sore, but don't worry. Penguin's fine. He's back in the wild now. But what was really interesting about this case is that it's the oldest penguin that we've ever received. Now, in the wild, the African penguin is expected to live about 10 years, but this penguin that came in was 21 years old which is very old for African penguin. We, we've never seen one that age before. And we knew that the penguin was that age because we had captured it before. Oh, sorry, girl. So the penguin wound up coming in uh, 20 years ago when it was one years old and came back to San Cobb again 20 years later when it was 21. So it was a really remarkable day. And I'm going to show you um, what the release looked like. I've got a cool video of it here. So let me, uh, let me share my screen and then we can... Uh, Take a look at that. So you'll notice here that there are a bunch of these little blues, and then we pop the adults out last because the blues tend to follow the adults on the beach. And there's just this one guy back here who seems to have forgotten what's happening. And off they go, back out to sea. I actually just want to show you, this is my favorite part of it. It's really cute. At the back here, just keep your eyes on this one little blue. He's going to topple over. Wait, here he comes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Shame. Uh, so I really enjoyed the day. It was, uh, it was really, really cool. And it was actually the first release that I had seen um, since... I would started here at San Cobb, so it was a really, really special moment for me. And everyone that was there really enjoyed it and thought that it was, ooh, 
excuse me, I'm busy talking. I'm busy talking. <laughs> Everyone that was there thought it was um, a really special day. And those guys are now out in the wild. Now, how did a lot of those birds wind up here? Like I said, some of them come in for trauma cases, like getting fishing lines and netting and swallowing this rubbish that we don't throw away properly. Um, a lot of the chicks that came in, they would have come in like this as an egg. <laughs> um, and we do get quite a few African penguin eggs every year. And we hatch them ourselves and rear them until they're old enough to go back into the wild, like the ones that you saw there. And definitely we would have had some that would have come in because mom and dad started molting at the wrong time of the year. Um, and if mom and dad are molting, they can't go into the ocean to catch fish to feed the chicks. So the chicks wind up being abandoned. So that, those were the birds that were there on the day. And, you know, but what is the whole point of this? Why do we bother doing this? Why do we bother going in there and picking them up at all? And it's all got to do with the population of the African penguin, which is really dwindling. There aren't a lot of these birds left. There are only about 19,000 breeding pairs left of the African penguin. And that sounds like quite a bit, but there were two and a half million breeding pairs in the 1930s. So we basically lost 98% of this population in less than 100 years. So that's why the work that we do here at Sankop is really, really important. And hopefully these guys are going to go out and they're going to make nests so that they can make their own little baby penguins one day. All the blues that we release, they're a little bit too young to be making nests and doing stuff like that. A little stubby. She's too young to... Yeah. Excuse me. A little stubby. She's too young to be making nests and getting married and having baby penguins. Um, but I do have a cool video to show you of some of our birds nesting because it's, it's quite fun to see an African penguin make a nest. those blues when they're old enough they're going to be thinking about making their own nest. Sorry, Stubby's on the floor. It's quite hot here in South Africa today. So uh, she's having a little walk around. Oh, there she is. There she is. She's fine. Hello. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's all I really have to tell you about APAD. But if you want to know what you can do to help the African penguin, because it doesn't have to be African Penguin Awareness Day for you to get involved. And for you to help us. If you want to help, you can go to the SANCOB website, www.sandcob.co.za, and you can help us by adopting a penguin, or you can contact Joe Grabowski through Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants and help donate towards this cause. This year's SANCOB is going to cost 12 and a half million rand to run, and everything that comes from this, it comes from donations. So if you enjoyed this lesson campaign and your kids got something out of it, please do consider helping us out. So I am going to go and pick up that little one while I unmute uh, my classes that have been joining me in for this. I have a class from Texas and New Jersey. Guys, thank you so much for joining in. I'm going to unmute you now. So if you have any questions about African Penguin Awareness Day or about penguin releases or little stubby, she's under my table for some reason now, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go grab her and then we can have a chance to get some questions together. So, um, Dawn, I'm going to unmute you first, and then any questions that we have from your class can come up. Okay. Great. Apology question. Okay, Nolan. Let me just peel off and get her. Okay, go ahead. All right. Hi, what's your question? How do African penguins communicate? You're going to have to talk into the mic, please. How do African penguins what? Communicate to each other. How do they communicate with each other? Okay. Um, well, they can show signs of aggression by snaking 
their head like this. If they're snaking their head at you, they're not making cute eyes at you. They want to bite you. Um, they also make a lot of noise. You would have heard Stubby was noising at me earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they make a lot of noise. And this is called braying, and these braids do mean different things. So it can be a sign of affection, like, oh, you're my friend, like little Stubby's noise. Now, that wasn't aggressive. She was like, I like you. You're my friend. Um, they can also do it, you know, um, sometimes married penguin couples get together and they'll like noise at each other to see who can make the most <laughs> can make the most noise, which is why they have the nickname the jackass penguin because they kind of make like this loud donkey braying noise. So they communicate that way. And they also preen each other. So um, if they like, go to each other's feathers and they'll kind of, yo, I'm sorry, girl. They can go to each other's feathers and like clean them with their beaks, and that's also a sign of affection. <coughs> Ooh, sorry, good question. Do we, does our class ask another question? Yeah, I'll go for it. Go ahead. What can you do? Just that we can help to Did you? So I can't hear you. All your teacher's going to have to repeat the question into the mic for me. Thank you. What can we do just at home to help save penguins? Um, you can think about how, what you do with your trash. We get a lot of seabirds in that coming that are coming in because they're eating this rubbish that we're not throwing away properly. So whenever you can, reduce, reuse, recycle, um, and just make some basic changes in your life. Instead of using a plastic bottle, you know, buy cans instead. If you can use a paper plastic bag, use a paper bag. Stop using straws. Straws, most straws cannot be recycled. Please don't use them, and a lot of them get picked up by animals. If either of your parents smoke, make sure that they don't throw their cigarette butts out the car window if they're driving. It winds up, ooh, sorry, girl. Oh, she's giving me a swim. You okay? You okay? I'm sorry. Um, uh, they wind up, you know, just getting on the roads, and then even if they, even if you don't live by the ocean, I mean, they get in rivers, and they actually wind up in the ocean somehow. So definitely just thinking about how you work with your rubbish and stuff like that will help. Okay, Alright, so guys, I'm going to take one more question from your class and then I'll head over to the other classroom. Oh. Hi, my name is Sophia. Do you know of any penguin that has a rare sickness? Penguin sicknesses. Penguin sicknesses? Yes. What kind of sickness? Okay. Um, so there are types of illnesses that, like in South Africa, for example, penguins can get avian malaria, um, but people can't hear. So that's definitely something that's different between us. And um, a fun illness, it's not fun because it's not fun for them, but it's a funny name. It's called bumblefoot. And basically what happens is at the bottom of the penguin foot, oh, sorry, Stubbs. At the bottom of the penguin foot, um, they get like these little sores, and it's kind of like from putting too much weight on their feet all day. Like think of it like a bed sore, you know? They're not getting around and moving and swimming. They're just having these little fat bodies that just stand here on these cute little feet, um, and then they get sores under their feet. So bumblefoot is one, um, and then also saculitis. Their breathing system is quite different to ours. So our lungs, when we breathe, they go up and down, and that's cool. For penguins, their lungs don't move at all, and they rather have these little air sacs um, that move. So if one of those little air sacs gets infected, it's called saculitis. So those are some examples of penguin illnesses that people can't get. Well, at least the malaria one, people can't get it here. All right, cool. So I'm going to mute you guys and then head over to our other class. Okay, guys. Yeah, there you go. Hi. Hi, I'm Kevin O'Shea. Um, what are the predators of the penguins? <laughs> well, the predators. I can hear you. Thank you. Um, the predators for the African penguin fur seals. Um, some sometimes sharks. Sharks will eat the penguins if there's not much else to eat, and some types of whales. That's a good question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Erica. Hi. Um, how old are the penguins when they start nesting? How old do the penguins get? 
Is that what you're asking? Um, how old are the penguins when they start nesting? Oh, thank you. Um, they normally reach sexual maturity when they're like three or four years old. So, yeah, they wait a while to get married. They don't just jump in there, you know. It's good. Good. Thank you. All right, guys, and then time for uh, one more question. Question. How many eggs does a penguin usually lay, and how long do they stay with their babies? That's a very good question. So they normally lay two eggs, and it is common for both of them to hatch, uh, but they'll only lay eggs like once a year. And they'll stay with them for quite a while, actually, like a couple months. So when the African penguin is born, it's covered with this fluff, and we call them chicks. And then when they lose all of their fluff, we call them blue. So, like, Stubby is a blue. And you can see she's kind of got, like, this pretty bluish shine to her feathers. So, normally, they'll stay with mom until they're about, like, four months old. And then they'll start to do their own thing. But they do still uh, keep in touch. <laughs> Great, guys. Well, thank you so much. I really love this question. Stubby does well. She is hot. She wants to go for a swim. Hey, girl. Um, but thank you so much for joining in. Anyone that has been watching any of these lessons, thank you for sticking with us through the campaign. Hopefully we can do it again next year and with some new content. And goodbye from us at Sankob and from Stubby, and we hope that you have a lovely day. And please remember the African penguin is in danger, and we need your help to try and keep this animal with us so that future generations can enjoy the beautiful African penguin. Um,